Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about cardiorenal syndrome. Acute or chronic dysfunction of the heart can lead to acute or chronic dysfunction of the kidneys, and vice versa. Acute or chronic dysfunction of the kidneys can lead to acute or chronic dysfunction of the heart. A few associations have been made between the heart and the kidneys. These are that mortality is increased in patients with heart failure who have a reduced glomerular filtration rate. Patients with chronic kidney injury have an increased risk of both atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease and heart failure, and cardiovascular disease is responsible for up to 50% of deaths in patients with renal failure. Acute or chronic systemic disorders can cause both cardiac and renal dysfunction. Basically, a diseased heart has numerous negative effects on kidney function, but at the same time, renal insufficiency can significantly impair cardiac function. Given the complex nature and association between the heart and the kidneys, a group of cool guys categorized the different interactions between the heart and kidneys into five types. So these are the five types of cardiorenal syndrome. Type one is when you have acute heart failure causing acute kidney injury. Type two, chronic heart failure causing chronic kidney injury. Type three, abrupt or worsening acute kidney injury can lead to sort of an acute cardiac dysfunction such as a heart failure. Type four, cardiorenal syndrome is when you have chronic kidney disease uh, contributing to cardiac dysfunction, which can manifest as coronary artery disease, heart failure, or arrhythmias. Type 5 is when you have essentially a systemic disorder, such as sepsis or diabetes, that can cause both cardiac and renal dysfunction. In this video, we'll focus on type 1 and type 2 cardiorenal syndrome, which is where the heart dysfunction causes renal dysfunction. And then we can touch on type 4 where chronic kidney disease contributes to basically cardiovascular disease. So heart failure is when there is not enough cardiac output to meet metabolic demand. Cardiac output is calculated by heart rate times by stroke volume. Stroke volume is uh, affected or the factors of stroke volume include the preload, contractility and afterload. In acute heart failure, such as after a myocardial infarction, an infection, or complications from surgery, um, you have a sudden drop in cardiac output, and you will get all these symptoms of heart failure. With the drop in cardiac output, the sympathetic nervous system activates and will increase stroke volume and will increase heart rate to compensate, as well as it will stimulate the release of renin from the kidneys. The release of renin will activate the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, but this takes a while. Further, with reduced cardiac output in heart failure, there is reduced perfusion to the kidneys, which will subsequently lead to acute kidney injury. And this is already the beginning of the relationship, the cardiorenal syndrome. With reduced perfusion, renin is released as well, activating the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, or RAS for short. Now, RAS leads to an increase in sodium and water retention, uh, and it will also increase ADH, antidiuretic hormone, which will aim to increase the mean arterial pressure, the blood pressure essentially. However, while water and sodium increases the volume, uh, it will also increase the mean arterial pressure, which means that there will be an increase in afterload, which technically reduces cardiac output. RAS also causes vasoconstriction, further contributing to reduced renal perfusion. When you have right-sided heart failure, it means that you have an increase in central venous pressure because blood will sort of go backwards. And when you have an increase in central venous pressure, you have an increase in renal vein pressure, which will contribute to uh, acute kidney injury. Vasoconstriction from RAS also will increase mean arterial pressure. During heart failure, the ventricles stretch and release brain natriuretic peptide. 
and the vessels as well as the heart release other vasodilatory mediators such as nitric oxide, prostaglandins and bradykinin. Now these mediators will mitigate the renin angiotensin aldosterone system technically. However, given the ongoing reduced cardiac output, which also is compounded by the acute kidney injury, these vasodilatory mediators don't really have much of an effect and the renin angiotensin aldosterone system will predominate. Acute heart failure as well as other heart failures have an inflammatory component to it, driven by the innate immune system, contributing to acute kidney injury. In acute heart failure, exogenous factors also causes acute kidney injury. This can be from contrast, from emergency angiograms, as well as the use of nephrotoxins. As you can see, there are many mechanisms of acute kidney injury when acute heart failure occurs. But the same principle or mechanisms happens with chronic heart failure, with the activation of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system playing a big role. Continuing on though, prolonged acute kidney injury can lead to chronic kidney disease. Now, as we know, chronic kidney disease can occur from many other causes, diabetes, hypertension, and glomerulonephritis. Type 3 and type 4 cardiorenal syndrome look at how acute kidney injury and uh, chronic kidney injury uh, causes cardiac dysfunction. Let's focus on type 4, which is how primary chronic kidney disease can lead to essentially uh, cardiovascular dysfunction. So chronic kidney disease is defined by low glomerular filtration rate. Low glomerular filtration rate will activate the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. The renin angiotensin aldosterone system will do a few things. Firstly, it will uh, cause systemic vasoconstriction, which is hypertension. Hypertension causes cardiac remodeling. Water and sodium retention uh, increases the mean arterial pressure, hypertension, and also will affect cardiac muscle cells, leading to cardiac remodeling, as well as left ventricular hypertrophy. Chronic kidney disease leads to reduced erythropoietin uh, production, which will lead to anemia. And so you have an increased risk of ischemic uh, events, technically, in the heart. Chronic kidney disease also means that you have less active vitamin D, leading to elevated parathyroid hormone levels. When you have elevated parathyroid hormone levels, this causes an increase in calcium and phosphate, which can increase coronary and tissue calcification, leading to an increased risk of ischemic events. In uh, kidney disease, you have electrolyte imbalance. And specifically, hyperkalemia can lead to arrhythmias uh, within the heart. In summary, these changes increase the risk of cardiovascular disease, chronic heart failure, coronary artery disease, and arrhythmias. Management of cardiorenal syndrome is challenging because treatment directed towards improving cardiac function can worsen kidney function. Type 1 and type 2 cardiorenal syndrome is what we will mainly focus on. So in this scenario, diuretics is obviously used if there is fluid overload. And we know that it will cause renal impairment. ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers uh, are used in heart failure. And it may improve glomerular filtration rate temporarily, but does not improve renal function technically. They are also nephrotoxic, and their mechanism is essentially that they cause vasodilation of the efferent arterioles, essentially relieving pressure in the glomerulus. In cardiorenal syndrome, the use of intravenous vasodilators um, may also help. Ionotropic drugs are only used for cardiogenic shock in heart failure. And then you have ultrafiltration, and this is usually uh, for patients with decompensated heart failure who are diuretic resistant and require fluid to be offloaded. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video on cardiorenal syndrome, which is quite complicated.
but as you as we've learned there's five types and type one and type two are probably the most uh, worth knowing about as well as type four cardiorenal syndrome thank you for watching hope you enjoyed this video